Plants are an extremely attractive photographic subject, but sometimes our shots don't turn out well as we had hoped. You know, there are a few simple guidelines that we can use to improve those shots a whole bunch. And here to discuss them is photographer Frank Palo. Frank, how are you today? How are you doing, Mike? Good. We got a nice, bright day to take our shots yeah, of our plants. Beautiful. What should we remember? First of all, we don't need an awful lot of expensive equipment to do close-up photography. You, you need the camera with a normal 50 millimeter lens, really, and I think most people don't realize that that lens, focusing down to about two feet, gets you to a real close-up. But maybe we should qualify what close-up photography is or what we're talking about, because to some, a close-up might be considered a head and shoulders portrait of an individual, while others might consider a close-up as a left front foot of a fly. But let me get back to that 50 millimeter lens again and show you exactly what you get at that close-up distance. I have a little black card here that represents the amount of area you actually see through the viewfinder when you're focused at, say, about two feet away with that 50 millimeter lens. And look at that. You can get a nice close-up of this little geranium here. That's the entire area that will be taken in, and to a lot of people, that is a great close-up. Yeah, that's nice. Mike, there are other ways to improve close-up pictures outdoors. I like to use reflectors, for example. All right. And I have a few here that, that I really find very helpful. As you see, there are three different kinds of reflectors here, Mike. Two of them are plain old aluminum foil, one with the shiny side uh, and one with the dull side. And there are times when you'd want to use either for a specific re result that you want to get. And then the good old plain old white matte board. And Mike, there's one other thing I did too for a reflector. And that is to sort of make a little magic wand out of it. This is the aluminum reflector on a small piece of cardboard. And it comes in real handy when you're photographing small flowers, small objects like this, because it gives you an opportunity to illuminate just that flower. Now, the real reason for attaching the coat hanger wire to this reflector is that it gives me a little bit more mobility, being able to get back here, look through the viewfinder, and say, oh my goodness, look at that, we've got the reflector going right in. And I can work alone this way, too. Gives me an opportunity to get the shadows filled in like that. Boy, it's just an inexpensive way to make a nice, uh, very maneuverable reflector. Yes, and Mike, so far we've only talked about taking close-up pictures with that normal 50 millimeter lens that almost everybody buys with their 35 millimeter camera. Right. I happen to have a 50 millimeter with a macro mode to it, and so now what do you say we use that macro mode and show what we can do by moving a little closer. If you can move that flower right. from there. I'll take this uh, card take that off, too. One, and then let me put a smaller one up here, and That's you see nice there are flower. many blooms on that yeah. one. And let's see what we can do from that viewpoint. Well, Mike, with this beautiful sunshine we have today, and the brilliant colors in the flowers themselves, I'm going to do a couple of things here. First of all, I'm going to change the camera to a horizontal format, because we're going to move in just as close as we can, and try to get the composition that is really going to do justice to those pretty flowers. I have the camera loaded with Kodakolor VR200 film, that's a medium speed film. It gives me an opportunity to use a very small lens opening in this bright sunlight. And still the background is far enough away so that it's not going to interfere with any of the flowers themselves. Now that's a beautiful close up, but I think we can add a little bit of life to it. We didn't get up early enough this morning to find some dew on there, so let's create our own. And we can do that with the spray of water that we brought along. Mike, can you hand me that sure. uh, mister there? All right. That now, seems simple enough. All right. But look how it lightens up the, the leaves, the flowers themselves. Okay, Mike, now if you'll put that back down there, I want to just right. double check the focus again. Oh, sparkling, <laughs> sparkling. Absolutely fantastic. You can get another one there. Now, Mike, that's step number two. <laughs> Finally, I think we can do something that's a totally different, an abstract effect of these flowers. Fine. And we can do that by using the sheet of textured plastic. Right here? Or, yeah. And if you just place that, that's it, right in front of the flower itself. Now, what you're going to have to do for me is just move, oh, isn't that beautiful? Move, forward move it here. forward, a little bit back, further, right. further back. Oh, right there, right there. Right. Oh, that is good. That is good. Hold it right there. It really makes blobs of color there, doesn't it? Oh, the result is just out of this world. Well, there you have it, Mike. Uh, as I said at the very beginning, close-ups are easy. Try using the close-up lenses, the close techniques that we talk about, the reflectors to reflect light back in, uh, spray some water on to lighten the plant, and do try the abstracts. They're a lot of fun.